Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible out. Turn to Isaiah chapter 30. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isaiah chapter 30 in verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be an help, nor profit, but a shame, and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish. From whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have, have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Listen carefully, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Now what is a seer? Well, the answer to that is in 1 Samuel 9.9. 9 said, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, so if you wanted to go ask a, God a question, okay, that's what inquiring means. When a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things, Prophecy deceits. In other words, How does that song go? Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Yeah. Don't tell us the right things. Tell us what we want to hear. Hey, that's, what, 98% of all the churches, right? Verse 11, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. What does that mean? Let's get God out of the way. We don't want him in front of us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression, and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shirt to take fire from the hearth, or to take water withal out 
of the pit. Sound like those pieces are going to be really, really small pieces. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. But ye said, No, for we will flee upon horses, therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and at the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of judgment. Now there's a big difference between judgment and wrath. Judgment is getting a spanking. Wrath is being destroyed totally. Trust me, I know the difference. I've been spanked so many times my uh, backside is still a little bit sore. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry when he shall hear it. He will answer thee. And though the Lord shall give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, when ye turn to the left. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. So, God wants us to get rid of our idols and graven images. Uh, you know what? What's television? Verse 23. Then shall he give thee the rain of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the corn shall eat clean provender, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. And his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations. All right, in verse 28, And his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. Vanity means worthless. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Now, when you got a horse, you put the bridle in its mouth. And when you pull it to the right, the horse goes to the right. When you pull it to the left, it goes to the left. They're making that comparison here. Verse 29. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemn is kept 
and gladness of heart, as when one goeth with a pipe to come unto the mountain of the Lord, to the Holy One of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lightning down of his arm, with the indignation of his anger, and with the flame of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstones. You know, that's very similar to the plagues of Egypt and the plague, one of the plagues of Revelation. Now, in Exodus 9 and verse 24, So there was hail, with fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. And then, uh, you know, because what the Lord does in the past is what he does in the future. How about Revelation 8, 7? The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. So, verse 30, Isaiah 30, 30. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger, with the flame of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstone. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod, and in every place where the grounded staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon it, it shall be with tabrets and harps, and in battles of shaking will he fight with it. For Topheth is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared, he hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood, the breath of the Lord, like a stream of of brimstone doth kindle it. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Tophet or Topheth. Uh, what is that? Well, in 2 Kings 23.10 And he defiled Toph Topheth, Topheth which is in the valley of the ch children of Hinnom that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. Molech was a satanic god that uh, they sacrificed their children by fire to this fake god. Jeremiah 7.31 And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place." That was Jeremiah 7.32. And they are, the Lord's going to slaughter those that were sacrificing their children there. So, so the Lord's voice, uh, well, the mouth of the Lord, well, the breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. That's Isaiah 30, 33. So, all those that burnt their children in fire, human sacrifice to a devil god, they're going to suffer the same fate. All right, that's the end of Isaiah chapter 30 commentary. 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.